शिवानंद लहरी श्लोका नंबर सिक्सटी सिक्स क्रीडा सृजसी प्रपंचमखिल क्रीडा मृगास्ते जना यत्कर्माचरित मैं चवत प्रीत तत् शंभो स्वस्य कुतूहल से कर्ण मच्चेषिम निश्चित तस्माकक्षण पशुपते कर्तव्यमेवया अन्वया हे शंभो अखिल प्रपंचम क्रीडा सृजसी ते जना क्रीडा मृगा मया यत् कर्म आचरित तत् प्रीत मच्चेषिट स्वस्य कुतूहल से कर्ण निश्चित तस्मा हे पशुपते त्वया मामक रक्षण कर्तव्य फॉर वन हूज मैंड इज सरेंडर्ड विथ भक्ति टू लॉर्ड शिवा नथिंग इज इम्पॉसिबल हैविंग मेन्शन दिस इन द प्रीवियस वर्स श्री शंकर भगवत पादा नाउ इन दिस श्लोका टेल्स द लॉर्ड नो मैटर वॉट आई डू एंड हाउ आई बिहेव इट इज योर रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू प्रोटेक्ट मी then he addresses the lord as he shambho the giver of happiness o parmeshwara akhilam this whole or complete prapancham world or universe kridartham for the purpose of playing srijasi you create te for you janaha all these people are क्रीडा मृगा दि एनिमल्स टू बी प्लेड विथ इन अदर वर्ड्स दे आर ऑल योर टॉयस इन ऑर्डर टू प्ले यू ब्रिंग द यूनिवर्स इन टू क्रिएशन सो ऑल ऑफ अस हु आर विद इन दिस क्रिएशन आर योर टॉय एनिमल्स इन अदर वर्ड्स वी आर ऑल एनिमल्स क्रिएटेड बाय यू फॉर योर गेम सो मया by me yet that which karma work or action acharitam has been done that is whether right or wrong all the actions done done by me tat that work bhavatah for you or for your prithyai pleasure bhavatyeva only it becomes that is all the work done by me will certainly make you happy why because mat cheshtitam all the actions that are done by me swasya to your kutuhalasya a matter of happiness karanam they are all instrumental nischitam this is for sure that is all the worldly activities and transactions made by me are instrumental to inducing happiness in you certainly tasmat therefore he pashupate o lord the protector of the ignorant jeevas tvaya by you mamaka rakshanam protecting me kartavyam eva must be done the onus of protecting me is yours because in the world just like toys are made to be enjoyed by the maker similarly you have created us so whatever is done by us must give you pleasure or may it give you happiness this is the form of prayer in this verse by sri shankara bhagavat pada it is said that the whole world has been created effortlessly by the lord so creation is called a play because the lord who is a form of fullness has no self purpose to be fulfilled by the creation of this universe it is called as a play 
moreover we the beings created by him are all toy animals meant for uh, playing in this game so whatever actions are done by us may it be rightful or wrong it is bound to cause only happiness to the lord all our actions are instruments meant for giving him joy since we are in this game by his design with his desire uh, so our actions will definitely give him happiness therefore lord pashupati must definitely protect us this is the essential meaning of this verse parameshwara is the artist of this creation though he has nothing to gain from it he is not touched by the emotions likely to be the result of creation sustenance and dissolution of the universe now these activities continue in a cycle one after the other that is this model of creation dissolution is a cyclic occurrence for the lord's play now this is taught uh, to us in the brahma sutra loka vastu leela kaivalyam ishwara is the causeless cause for existence in other words he is independent we are all dependent on him in other words we are all toys in his hands so if we perform all our actions with the attitude of surrender to ishwara then the results of the actions will not bind us we will be free from the binding notions and emotions this is mentioned by sri shankara bhagavat pada in one of his shloka compositions as yadyad karma karomi tat tad akhilam shambho tavaradhanam whatever actions or work is done by me o shambhu it is a respectful offering to you if we perform our daily activities with this attitude then these activities will become instrumental to giving giving us chitta shuddhi that is a very mature clean mind that further will result in uh, helping us finding our own fullness in the oneness with ishwara explanation for this verse is concluded shivananda lehri verse number 67 bahuvidha paritosha bashpa pura sphuta pula kankita charu bhog bhumim chirapada phala kankshi sevyamanam parama sadashiva bhavanam prapadye this verse is in the anvaya format itself it was mentioned that verses 45 to 66 were set in the meter shardula vikriditam now this verse 67 and verse number 68 are set in the chandas pushpitagra in verse number 44 information about ardha samavritta was mentioned that is chandas is of three types samavritta ardha samavritta and vishama vritta just to remind you vritta is another uh, word used for chandas ardha samavritta means the first and third quarters of the verse will be similar in the number of syllables second and fourth quarters will be similar this ardha samavritta was seen in verse number 44 in which the name of the chandas was vasanta tilaka now in these two verses 67 and 68 also uh, the quarters are in ardha samavritta and uh, they are set in the chandas named pushpitagra in this type of chandas the lakshana or the description of the chandas is like this that is in the first and the third quarter the syllables will comprise of nagana another nagana then ragana and yagana totally 12 syllables 
then the second and the fourth quarters will be constructed with na gana j gana again j gana and r gana then one guru so totally there will be 13 syllables chandas of this type is known as pushpitagra recalling the previous shloka now parameshwara brought this creation into existence effortlessly this is said to be his playing field and so naturally we are all the toy animals in this field so it follows that whatever we do it will certainly give happiness to parameshwara and so it is his responsibility to protect us then in this verse sri shankara bhagavat pada tells parameshwara i will be continuously engrossed in meditating on you o lord you must protect me that is during meditation what will be the nature of the mind is described in this verse बहुविध पितोष बाष्पूरस्फुटपुलकांकितचारुभोग भूमि दीज टू क्वार्टर्स ऑफ द वर्स इज वन कॉम्पाउंड वर्ड नाउ वील सी द मीनिंग बहुविध फ्रॉम मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ पितोष जॉय बाष्प द टीयर्स बीइंग शेड पूर एंड फ्लोइंग स्फुट very clearly pulakankita devotion symbolized by horripilations charu bhoga bhumim very pleasing enjoyable field chirapada phalakankshi sevya manam chirapada the permanent state of liberation that is the phala fruit expected kankshi one who desires to gain this fruit sevya mana by them being worshiped that is being worshiped by those who desire to gain the fruit of the permanent state of liberation which is parama sada shiva bhavanam parama means ultimate end sought which is sada shiva the form of absolute bliss and bhavana is contemplation of such a form of bliss prapadye unto that i surrender to attain that is always i will remain in the state of contemplating on lord paramashiva is the essential meaning once paramashiva has taken over the responsibility of protecting us it is appropriate for us to remain engrossed in contemplating on his form such a devotee who is engrossed in shiva dhyana will shed tears of joy further as a symbol of this great bhakti the devotee's body will express horripilations only shiva dhyana can express such beautiful experiences of devotion those devotees whose desire is to attain moksha also seek to meditate on shiva sri shankara says i too desire to surrender myself in the meditation of such a blissful form of parama shiva ultimately merging in him there are three types of worship that is bhautika vachikam manasikam bhautikam means external form of worship vachikam is telling verses in praise of the lord orally and then manasikam is doing internal meditation in this one is better than the other that is vachikam is better than bhautikam and manasikam is better than vachikam thinking of ishwara as though he is physically present in a form idol form within the mind and then offering him everything with respect love and devotion internally 
is called manasikam puja which is the most significant form of worship for devotees their heart is said to be the best and appropriate place for doing dhyana spiritual masters also mention the heart as the best place meant for dhyana it is the purest location when a devotee gains the capacity to remain focused in his heart then he is said to lose awareness of his external body then he rises to the level of consciousness in which he is in a form of bright light and bliss then his body will have horripilations all over this to the external world is an expression of the height of devotion he has to lord parmashiva in other words the devotee is one with the lord such a state of merging and becoming one with the lord is the desire expressed by sri shankara thus the most significant form of dhyana has been described in this verse explanation for this verse is concluded shivananda lehri verse number 68 amita mudamrutam muhur duhantim vimala bhavat pada goshtham avasantim sadaya pashupate su punya pakam mama paripalaya bhakti dhenu mekam anvaya सदया पशुपते अमित मुदमृत मुहु दुहती विमल भवत्पदोष्ठम आवसती सुपुण्यपाका मम एक भक्ति धेनु पिपाल इन द प्रीवियस् वर्स श्री शंकर भगवत्पाद सेट ई विल एंग्रॉस मै सेफ इन परमेश्वर ध्यान enjoy the experience of the epitome of devotion in the form of horripilations and remain in that state of dhyana but he finds it difficult to remain in that state of devotion so in this verse he says metaphorically i will make that devotion into a cow and submit it to you parameshwara you take care of it and protect it sadaya one filled with compassion he pashupate such a compassionate lord who removes agnana and protects the jeevas that parameshwara amita mudamrutam mita means less amita means much more or immeasurable quantity then mud means ananda or bliss and this bliss amrita uh, this bliss itself is amrita nectar this word amrita also has the meaning of milk in this context immeasurable amount of joy is compared to milk so such an abundance of milk muhu again and again and again duhantim yielding vimala bhavat pada goshtham your clean pure feet is the goshta means the cow pen in that cow pen avasantim residing supunya pakam in the form of the fruits of meritorious deeds performed mama mai ekam only one bhakti dhenum the devotion called as cow paripalaya you please protect o lord shiva the devotion i have for you is repeatedly giving me the experience of bliss moreover it resides at your pure lotus feet such devotion has come to me as a result of some good virtuous deeds performed but 
I don't have the capacity to keep such devotion stable and permanent. Therefore, I have surrendered that devotion called cow at your lotus feet. So now, it is your responsibility to keep the devotion as is and protect it. This is the essential meaning of this verse. The word muhohu duhantim is of significance. Usually, a cow is milked in the morning and then once in the evening. But here it is said that the devotion pours out again and again and again. So, an unbroken continuity in the yield of milk by the bhakti dhenu is implied. So, this bhakti dhenu is very significant. Then there is another meaning suggested by the words supunya pakam. Generally, the meaning of paka is the result of, that is phala of supunya, means virtuous deeds performed. This word paka also has the meaning of a newborn baby that has to be nursed. So, supunya pakam will mean the infant born as a result of the virtuous deeds performed. Such an infant you, O Lord, must protect. This meaning is also very distinctly implied here. In the world, as we know, how a person desires to nourish himself or herself with cow's milk, but sometimes becomes incapable of protecting that cow which is giving milk. Then, in that situation, he gives the cow to a cow herd who has many cows and specializes in caring and protecting for them. So that the cow herd can take good care and protect the cow, but this person will continue to relish the milk. Similarly, the devotion for Lord Parameshwara is so abounding that Sri Shankara says, I am feeling incapable of upholding it. So, I am surrendering that cow Bhakti Dhenu to you, seeking refuge in you to protect that cow called devotion. The result of that devotion Bhakti Dhenu, which is Paramananda, I will continue to enjoy and experience. This is the uh, essential meaning which is implied by Sri Shankara Bhagavat Pada, the eminent devotee. Explanation for this verse is concluded here. Shivananda Lehri, verse number 69. Jadata Pashuta Kalankita Kutila Charatvancha Nasti Mai Deva Asti Adi Raja Maule Bhavada Bharanasya Nasmi Kim Patram Anvaya Jadata Pashuta Kalankita Kutila Charatvam Mai He Deva Nasti Yadi Asti He Raja Maule Bhavad Abharanasya Patram Na Asmi Kim in the previous verse, Sri Shankara Bhagavad Pada told Ishwara, I will leave the devotion called cow under your protection and care, but let me enjoy the milk of bliss yielded by the cow. And then now in this verse he says, There are no defects in me, O Lord, so it will be appropriate for you to accept me. Even if you do find some defect, it will be befitting for you to accept me. Then the significance is here that he quotes the example of the moon seeking acceptance. Jadata, dull-witted, such a quality. And then Pashuta, behaving indiscriminately, unthinkingly, like an animal. Kalankita, presence of some defect in us. Then Kutila Charatvam, crooked behavior. Now, none of this, Mai, in me. He Deva, O Lord, the self-effulgent one, 
नास्ति इज नॉट प्रेजेंट यदि अस्ति इफ समहाउ इट हैपेंस टू बी देयर हे राजमौले वन हु एडोन्स द डिफेक्टिव क्रेसेंट मून एज एन ऑर्नामेंट सच अ लॉर्ड परमेश्वरा भवद आभरणस्य बिकमिंग एन ऑर्नामेंट ऑफ योर्स पात्रम दैट क्वालिफिकेशन और फिटनेस न अस्मि किम विल आई नॉट बी द डिफेक्टिव क्वालिटीज जडता पशुता कलंकिता आर प्रेजेंट इन द मून नॉट इन मी येट ओ लॉर्ड यू एडोंट दैट मून ऑन योर हेड सो इवन इफ एनी डिफेक्टिव क्वालिटी इज प्रेजेंट इन मी इट इज ओनली बी फिटिंग फॉर यू to have regard for me also now here jadata in the moon means it is known that the moon is dependent on the sun for its light in other words moon is not an independent source of light that is referred to as jadata here then pashuta nature of an animal is seen in the moon according to purana narration moon is known to have taken the wife tara of guru brihaspati itself now that is a normal behavior for an animal abducting another's wife but so that quality of pashuta is attributed to the moon then everyone accepts that there is kalanka some impurity in the moon then kutila charata this is also seen in chandra because he moves all the time taking a different curve every day crooked behavior is also attributed to the moon or chandra pointing out these defects in the moon devotee sri shankara says none of these is present in me even if any other defect is seen in me because you have adorned a defective moon it will be befitting for you to accept me also as i am now just putting the meaning together we see that sri shankara seeks the lord's acceptance by saying o parmeshwara the moon has the defects of jadata pashuta kalankita and kutila charata but i have none of these since you have made him an ornament certainly i am also fit to be an ornament adorned by you even if you happen to find some fault in me there is another meaning implied in this shloka lord shiva is seen to adorn ganga on his head then he is seen holding a deer adorning the crescent moon on the head and also he is seen wearing the serpent among these ganga has the quality of jadatva which means coldness or frigidity in this context the deer symbolizes pashutvam chandra implies kalankatvam sarpa or the snake represents crookedness kutilata so all the ornaments adorned by you o lord are defective in nature if we take this meaning here then sri shankara the devotee's prayer will get the meaning o lord none of these defects are in me that is why you are not accepting me and adorning me as an ornament is it now this feeling seems to be expressed as though parameshwara is being coaxed with guilt by the devotee to be accepted thus very beautifully this verse is bringing out the eagerness and yearning of the sincere devotee to be accepted by the lord explanation for this verse is concluded here shivananda lahri shloka number 70 
अरहसि रहसि स्वतंत्र बुद्ध्या वरिवसि तुम सुलभ प्रसन्न मूर्ति ही अगणित फलदायक प्रभोर में जगदधिको हृदय राजशेखरोस्ति अन्वया प्रसन्न मूर्ति ही अगणित फलदायक प्रभु जगत अधिक राजशेखर मे हृदय अस्ति अरहसी रहसी स्वतंत्र बुद्ध्या वरिवसि तुम सुलभ दिस श्लोक इज ऑलसो कंस्ट्रक्टेड इन द छंदस पुष्पिताघ्र इन द प्रीवियस श्लोक श्री शंकर सॉट दि एक्सेप्टेन्स फ्रॉम परमेश्वर बै एक्सप्लेनिंग दैट देर आर नो डिफेक्ट्स इन हिम एंड ईवन इफ देर वॉज एनी परमेश्वर शुड एक्सेप्ट हिम बिकॉज दि अदर्स विथ वन डिफेक्ट और दि अदर हैड बीन ब्लेस्ड बै परमेश्वर देन इन दिस श्लोक ही सैस ओ लॉड सिंस यू आर ऑलवेज प्रेजेंट इन मै हार्ट इट सेल्फ इट इस इंडीड वेरी ईजी टू वर्शिप यू प्रसन्न मूर्ति वन हु हेज दि कौंटेन्स ऑफ अ वेरी प्लीज चर्पि मैंड नाट ओनली दैट अगणित फलदायक वन हु इज केपबल ऑफ बेस्टाउिंग इमेजरबल फ्रूट्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ रिजल्ट डिजायर्ड फॉर देन प्रभु द लॉर्ड ऑफ एव्रीथिंग क्रियेशन सस्टेनेस डिसल्यूशन एंड एव्रीथिंग जगत अधिक वन हु इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ कॉन्शियस्नेस एंड सो ट्रांसेंड्स दिस वर्ल्ड सच अ ग्रेट राजशेखर राजा मीन्स चंद्र दट इज दिस वर्ड राजा इज अ सिनोनिम फॉर द वर्ड मून सो वन हु अडोन्स दि मून एज एन ऑर्नमेंट डेकोरेटिंग हिस ट्रेसेस दैट लॉर्ड शिवा चंद्र राजशेखर मे इन मै हृदय मैंड अस्ति हि रिमेन्स ऑलवेज बिकॉज ही इज रिसाइडिंग इन अ स्टेबल वे ऑलवेज विथ इन मी अरहसी दैट विच इज नॉट अ सीक्रेट इन अदर वर्ड्स दैट विच इज नॉट हिडन सो विसिबल एक्सटर्नली ऑलसो देन रहसी इन सेक्लूजन और इंटर्नली ऑलसो स्वतंत्र बुद्धिया with an intellect devoid of obstacles in thinking in other words one with independent thinking varivasitum to worship sulabha being effortless or easily attainable because the lord exists always in the mind externally or internally he can be worshiped any time in any method we desire to now just as in the world generally if we seek something from a cheerful person then he will give us whatever we ask for like that with a ready to bless and give countenance lord shiva is always cheerful in form prasanna murti hi and so he can bless us with any desire we seek to be fulfilled one cannot imagine how much he can give and he is the lord of all that is known and unknown in the world such a great chandra shekhar resides in my mind itself so whether internally in seclusion or externally to our hearts content in any method we can worship him we don't have to worry about anyone else directing or interfering in the method or time of worship this is the essential meaning of this verse now here the word rajashekhara has the meaning of sarvabhauma also which means the greatest among kings or all the lords uh in this verse lord shiva has been addressed as rajashekhara to point out the outstanding distinct nature of lord shiva any lord in the world can be approached only in an assembly or 
with an appointment in privacy and yet there is no guarantee that the seeker's wish will be fulfilled because that lord or king will be subject to mood swings but here lord shiva is the greatest of all the lords and kings rajashekharah because he is always cheerful prasanna murtihi and can be approached at any time anywhere arahasi and rahasi without fear this is the significance brought out in this verse then a question may arise how can i ensure that this greatest rajashekhara resides in my mind always shastra says one has to keep the mind free from impurities how to keep the mind free from impurities the same shastra says by consuming the appropriate food ahara chandogya upanishad says ahara shuddhau sattva shuddhihi sattva shuddhau dhruva smritihi smriti lambhe sarva granthi nam vipramokshah meaning of this verse is when ahara that is anything consumed or taken in is pure clean and fresh then the mind or thinking will also be clean and clear when the mind is clean memory will remain stable that is the mind will stay in its spiritual consciousness this state will render the mind free from the knots of ignorance and put us in the path to liberation now here in this uh, shloka the word ahara is very significant it is to be understood from a wider perspective now taking in food through the mouth to the stomach is alone not the meaning of ahara here whatever is taken in by the five sense organs is implied by this word ahara which means all the objects of sight hearing sound smell feeling everything is included in ahara in other words all the external sense objects and situations which are internalized is referred to by the word ahara when the sense perceptions are good and clean which means they are free from the hold of likes and dislikes then such a mind will be pure and clean ensuring lord shiva resides there always this is an explanation given for the word ahara by sri shankara bhagavat pada in his commentary explanation for this verse is concluded